Turn on your iPad, turn on your iPhone, and if you have the Constitution like I do, then open up your Bible and stand all across the sanctuary and turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 2. God bless James. Thank you for coercion, the Lord. First Kings chapter 2. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God reads from the New Living Translation. At the time of King David, death approached. He gave this charge to his son Solomon. I am going where everyone on earth must someday go. Lord, have mercy. Take courage and be a man. Take courage and be a man. Observe the requirements of the Lord, your God, and follow all his ways. Keep the decrees, commands, and regulations and laws written in the law of Moses, my God, so that you will be successful in all you do and wherever you go. David is instructing his sons, true success has everything to do with obedience to God's laws, statutes, and commands. That you will be successful in whatever you do when you strive to obey God's laws, statutes, and commands. If you do this, David says to his son, then the Lord will keep the promise he made to me. He told me, if your descendants live as they should and follow me faithfully with all their heart and soul, and, uh, and so one of them and so, and one of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for this time. Thank you for the privilege, Lord. It's such an honor to do business in your kingdom. Help us to understand that when we open up the Constitution, we are sitting and meeting with the king. And we are subjects in his kingdom and so Father God we have come to receive instruction from the king so that we can carry it out and rule well on earth so let your kingdom come let it manifest let your constitution govern our minds let your promises heal our emotions and our hearts let the requirements of the Constitution break every chain and break every yoke that we walked up in there with, Father, in the name of Jesus. It's your good will and your pleasure to bless those that is up under your care. We have come. We acknowledge your son, Jesus. We thank you for the price that was paid. And we as a body here at Going Off for Christ Church cry, Abba, Father. We thank you, Father God, as we get to stand as a community of believers. Oh, my God, with responsibility to advance and rule your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I know many of us is not used to hearing that type of praying. But that's what the Bible instructs us to do. Just so that you can know, side note, the Bible is about a king, Jesus, and his kingdom. Christian, you and I are subjects in this kingdom. That means when the king makes a decree, his decree is sovereign. God has given us an opportunity to do business, as you hear me say, in his kingdom. But there are standards, my God, that we have to operate according to the king's standards. And so, therefore, David has come to the end of a very warriors-like life. David was a warrior. David knew when to be a lamb and when to be a lion. 
David knew when to cut your head off and then when to humble himself and pray and ask God to have mercy on his soul. We know a lot about King David. He's one of the most talked about person in the Bible. David was a lion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But David is now at the end of his life and he's getting ready to transition. It's always good, fathers, to, look, to raise up your successor, Amen. which is your heir, your son. Yeah. <laughs> My God, and so David has done that. Through a series of events, my God, God made a promise to David that he would make sure that his, his, his dynasty and his reign will continue to reign. But there were some things that uh, the people after David needed to do in order for this to continue to manifest. We know that David had a lot of mistakes in his life and uh, some people that David put in charge, as Solomon that I'm getting ready to talk about, uh, made some mistakes and even in his life, my God. And God began to take from them the kingdom and they was left with one portion of the kingdom they had owned everything as i've taught y'all write this down you make the choice but you don't get to dictate the consequences of your choice my god david made a series of wrong choices my god even solomon in his older age made a series of wrong choices brother ronnie and it has cost the nation and has cost the people because my god who in my life got to suffer oh my god because i make the wrong choices please understand my god that you and i my god are making choices not just for yourself but for those that are coming behind you That's right. and so you must understand that if you want your children to go through what you went through then keep making the choices that you make if you don't want your children to experience what you have experienced up until this time then change your decisions Amen. are y'all with me so far and so we know that King Solomon was the wisest man, key word, wisest man that ever lived on the face of the earth. But towards the end of life, he began to make some wrong choices. Come on, somebody. It's amazing how, my God, the wisest man, Alvin, that ever lived on the face of the earth chose toward the end of his life, meaning the second half of his life, uh, to dishonor God's requirements. Mm. To choose, my God, to do it his way, uh, even after God warned him. He said, my God, the Bible says God get warning before destruction. God said, if you intermarry, my God, if you mix with these women, they're going to turn your heart away from me, son. Yeah. Here it was the wisest man, my God, that ever walked the face of the earth. I'm redundant. And God let him know early on in his ministry when he set him as the king that if you stay with me, my God, stay away from these foreign women, my God. Watch your life, my God. Guard, govern, and guide your life, my God. My God, you would always sit on the throne. Your light would always shine bright on the throne. But Solomon, again, the wisest man that ever lived on the face of the earth, chose, my God, to turn his back like many of us do, my God, uh, towards God's commandments. And he began to bring to himself women that God told him to stay away from. I wanted y'all to feel where I'm going. He chose to turn his back on the requirements, statutes, laws, and decrees. Them as Hebrew words, my God, of the Torah that Moses wrote. He turned his back on the laws, statutes, decrees, and commandments and requirements, my God. And God told him, don't do this. If you intermarry with these women, they're going to turn your heart away. He left, my God, the Constitution and chose to do it his way. Just like we are doing today. That's right. And it has cost him and the nation that he was once king of. He went from owning it all just to one. He went from owning it all just to one part of the nation. Stripped him all the way down to one point. Because he chose to turn his back in his latter years. Now in his, in his early years he was submitted to God. It's something about getting intoxicated oh, God. when God begins to bless you. It's something about, somebody need to hear this, that when God takes you from nothing and begin to take you up the ladder of success, my God, that you start worshiping it instead of worshiping the God who gave it to you. Yeah. See, 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 many of us will say, I would never do that, but we do it every day. When you don't pick up your Bible, when you choose to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, we do, we, we, we doing the same thing that Solomon's doing. Right. We're just doing it in a different way. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So lesson number one right there, don't get intoxicated off of God's blessings. Solomon chose to do it his way. And so I want to say something to the men as I flow, my God, because I love to talk about men. I love to talk about men's stuff. I love to do men's stuff. My God, it's one of my greatest callings, my God, is to work with men. And so, my God, men, we are in a battle. Write that down because some of us don't believe that. We may say, though, say that word, but we don't understand that we are in a battle. 
and we are also, write this word down, in a war. Please, ladies, take notes, my God, for your husband if he ain't a note taker. We are in a battle and we are in a war. Some of us don't believe that. All you got to do is look at the way we live outside the four walls. How haphazardly we take on life. See what I'm trying to say? My God, the stakes of this war and its casualties are higher than a check mark in a win or loss column. Lives will be lost, y'all. Eternities will be shaped. Destinies will either be discovered or dismissed in this war, in this battle. Eternities will be shaped. Destinies, my God, will be either discovered or dismissed. Dreams will be obtained or relinquished. Jesus has not asked you to be a fan, men and women today. He has plenty of fans already, y'all. Every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., Jesus' fan base shows up in full force. Jesus wants men who will carry out his agenda, his governance, his guidelines in the world of crisis. Jesus wants men who will rule well. I need every man and woman to understand that one of your first assignments in God's kingdom is that you learn to rule well. Yes. In order to rule well, you got to rule according to the statutes, the commandments, and the requirements of the kingdom. And when God said in Genesis that he gave mankind dominion, that is rulership. Yeah. Rulership. I'm teaching y'all from a different perspective. Don't look for no height. Look for impartation. You have to accept, my God, that God called you and I to be rulers. And God said, you have to rule, my God, from a position of strength. Many of us serve, many of us live from a position of defeat. When we are commanded by the king of this kingdom to rule well. And so the title of this sermon for the men as well as the women, prove yourself a man. And part of proving yourself a man is that you learn how to rule that what God has put in under your curse. Oh, my God. Help me understand this now. Come on, help me. Y'all go with me. Part of being an effective ruler, my God, you have to be able to rule that what God has put into your curve. As I talked to him in foundation class on stewardship, God has given us an opportunity to steward our life. That means you and I have to manage our lives. That means we have to, my God, manage it well. We have to rule it well, my God. Can I help you this morning? That some of us is very, very frustrated. You know why? Because we have not ruled or managed or stewarded our life well. And so, therefore, we are reaping the negative consequences behind wrong choices. Are y'all with me so far? And so, David is telling his son, my God, giving him a charge before he reached his second half of his life. He's telling him because David's getting ready to pass the kingdom. It's getting ready to be a transfer. And David, my God, wants to make sure that his son is set. My God, he want to make sure that his son understand, my God, the price that got to be paid, my God, to sit as the ruler of the nation. See what I'm trying to say? And so good leadership always trains, write this down, leaders. Good leadership always trains their replacements. I know that I would not be the pastor of going home for Christ Church, my God, the rest of my day. So right now, I've already started praying that God begin to show me or bring to me a successor. Someone that could be trained to take this church to the next level. My God, whether they hear or not hear, my God, begin to show me so I can begin to bring that person close. I'm getting ready if the Lord delay is coming to be 50 years old in September, my God. And so I got less days in front of me, my God. So I got to rule, manage, and steward well quickly, my God, because I ain't got a lot of time. And some of y'all that's already at 50... You ain't got a lot of time. And so we got to begin to rule well. And that's what David is doing. I'm just going to talk with you. We're going back to mahogany. As I told y'all Wednesday, we're going back to mahogany. My God, we, we got to be able to rule and manage that what God has given us. We got to do it well, and we got to do it effectively and efficiently because we don't have a lot of time. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Mm-hmm. So that means you got to begin to make some decisions. My God, that's tough. That means you got to separate from some people, some places, and some things that y'all always hear me say. Because you can always trace uh, a lot of our chaos and a lot of our frustration back to people, places, and things. Uh, as long as you got a whole lot of people, places, and things dealing with you, my God, God would never be able to touch your root system. Oh, uh, my God. God would never be able to deal with your root system when you crowd it, my God, with people, places, and things. Some of us got too much crowd around us. Oh, we, 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 we need to back up away from the crowd. We need to get away from the places. We need to get away from the things, my God. And so God can get that, that pitchfork and start digging, my God, up them roots, my God, that's up on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talking about prove yourself a man. 
Now, this is no gender right here, even though David was talking to his son, but I'm going to talk to the women as well. My God, we're going to deal with everything, my God, that got breath under the sound of my voice. But you got to answer, prove yourself a man, prove yourself a woman. See, we are born males, but you got to become a man. There's a difference from a male and a man. We are born males, but you got to become a man. And it's the reason why David told his own son, Prove yourself a man. Have you ever thought about that if you read it? Why would David tell his son to prove yourself a man when he was already a man? Because that lets you know you can be a male but not be a man. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And what we have in the world today is a lot of males that never became men. Yeah. Yeah. And when they get around some people that know how, even on fractured pieces, thank you, baby, fractured, broken pieces, my God. When they get around some alpha males, my God, because they never learned how to be a man, my God, they get intimidated, my God, behind strength and passion and commitment and discipline, my God. They don't, they don't want to get close to that because it's too inconvenient to them. It, it makes them uncomfortable, my God. It exposes, my God, deficiency, my God, when you continue to be 35 and 40 and acting like a male. Paul said, when I became a child, I put away childish fame. My God, a grown man that got kids that still act like a kid don't want to be around an alpha male. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to do is look around, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So it's something, it's something, it's something, it's something. It's something. David said, son, prove yourself a man. It's something to that. So point number one, let's get into this right quick. He was challenged to be strong. Why did David challenge his son to be strong? I want y'all to think now, okay? Here we come. According to verse 1 and 2, it says, At the time of King David's death approached, he gave this charge to his son Solomon. I am going where everyone on earth must go someday go. Take courage and be a man. David's charge to Solomon is very similar to the charge Moses' church gave to Joshua and his, as he prepared to hand the leadership of the Israelite people over to him. Moses' church told Joshua three times in Joshua chapter 1, 6-9, be strong and courageous. Because the men of God, Moses, knew that Joshua had to be strong. It's something about courage. Even if you got to do it afraid, but it's something about Courage. It takes strength. Strength will, will, strength will propel you when everybody else quit. Strength will forge you on through when everybody else has dropped out on you. Strength and courage, my God. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. The Bible says that David encouraged himself when all of his men rose up against him. <laughs> oh, I didn't have to do that, Pastor Terry. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. My God, David was in the midst of a major war, and all of his men that he went out and did battle with turned on him, Toya. And David had to encourage himself. Something about being strong. It's something about having that inner strength. I'm going somewhere, I promise you, my God. Because David wasn't talking about, my God, external. I'm going somewhere. Ah, ah. He wasn't talking about being strong external. Are y'all with me so far? Now, as David prepares to hand the mantle of the kingship over to his son, he tells Solomon, be strong. David isn't suggesting to Solomon that he start working out and lifting weights. That's good, too. But he is telling him to toughen up. I'm going somewhere. He see David. He, you see, David and Solomon weren't anything alike. Remember, he had lived as a fugitive, talking about David, in the Judean wilderness for over a decade. David had been a warrior leading the Israelites into battle many times over. David was rough. David was rugged. David was tough, and David was battle-tested. Solomon, though, uh, on the other hand, lived his whole life in the palace, surrounded by women. Now, I'm not going to crucify Solomon. It ain't Solomon's fault because David was highly blessed because he obeyed the laws, the statutes, the requirements, and the commands of God. And so God richly blessed David. And so, my God, when David come to the end of his life, my God, we know, my God, here comes Solomon, my God. Uh, uh, and Solomon just reaping the benefit of his daddy being obedient to God. Uh, Solomon is reaping the benefits, baby, on the front end, <laughs> my God, of something that his daddy did. And it's nothing wrong that he, 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 didn't get, he didn't go up in poverty. That's nothing wrong with Solomon that, that his daddy got, did it right by God, and my God. And, and David was a man after God's own heart. And, and when it came time for him to take the office of the king, my God, he was just reaping the benefits. Also, too, he growed up in luxury. That's not Solomon's fault. Are you listening to me so far? So I don't want none of y'all to feel bad because you were able to provide for your kids something that you couldn't, your mama and daddy couldn't provide for you. That's not your son or daughter's fault. If you bless, walk in it. My, 
Uh, if you bless walking, and my God, if God has opened up the windows of heaven and blessed you, thank God that you don't have to suffer like your parents and grandparents and great grandparents did. Uh, that's a blessing. And so it ain't Solomon, Solomon's fault, my God, that he growed up in a palace, not a house, in a palace full of women. Oh, my God. So David was surrounded by soldiers. Watch this. And Solomon was surrounded by women. Solomon was soft. He was. He was. Kind of like Pastor Peoples. He was soft. <laughs> Uh, that is why David told him to be strong. Watch this. I'm going to uh, men, men, men on Father's Day. Listen to me. Godly men are not sissies. I'm going to prove it to you. Because, uh, see, I, I, I put that in there because let me help you understand something. See, 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 when they see us come down here, when they see us, some men come down here and prostrate ourselves and fall out. You know what I'm trying to say? Screaming and hollering and stuff, acting wild like we do. To some men... They say, it don't take all that off. What is he doing all that for? They crazy in that church and whatever they were, they want to put on it. And they, and they think we are sissies. You know, I'm going to tell you why. Because, see, in the church, you see predominant women. And mostly, my God, you see the women running, screaming, shouting, travailing. You don't usually see a lot of men in other churches. But in going over Christ, you do. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. See what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. See, I, 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 I hate to say it, but when y'all stood up, when y'all stood up soldiers, battle-tested, rugged men, you know what I'm saying? I looked at some of the other men, they just sat there and looked crazy. Yeah, I said it, sure did. Going off of Christ, man, stand up and give God some glory in this church, man. That, that's too soft. That's sissy. Come on. Hey! Oh, my God. Mm. Sometimes you got to roar like an alpha male. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know I make you uncomfortable, but it's my job to make you uncomfortable. Yeah, But so the, the Solomon kind of had that little, he was soft. Solomon was a pretty boy. The Bible says Solomon was handsome. Solomon had cheese. Uh, Solomon, you know, had it all. <laughs> he wore Gucci and Louis and Prada and all of those stuff. Yeah. Uh, he had gold chariots. He had a, all kind of horses. Solomon had it going. Oh, mm. yeah, my God. But his daddy told him, son, be strong. I'm going somewhere. Mm. So I want us to understand, first of all, that uh, to be a man of God and to rule well, Ain't got nothing to do with you being soft. Yeah. Ruling well has everything to do, men, with you being responsible. Yeah. Yeah. With you being in alignment with the king and his decrees. And so, my God, when you are ruling well, the promises of God manifest itself in your life. As I told Kingdom Foundation, we as a people of God got to get to the point to where people don't hear our scriptures, they see our scriptures. They see the manifestation, my God, oh my God, of the word of God operating in our lives. And so David began to tell his son, you got to be strong. And he wasn't talking about external. My God, even though you got Gucci, Prada, Louis, all that stuff, my God, all that's good because God has blessed you with that. That's fine. But can your prayers get to heaven? Do your life have any influence? Is anybody watching you is anybody taking notice of you because you are different on your job how, uh, when, when your kid get to acting crazy in walmart is people watching how you discipline them are, is they learning from you or are they saying oh i don't want to do my kid like she did when you're in walmart and you know how they get to acting up and she, talking about i want this and start crying and falling out and you yanking on them and jerking them and slapping them all upside the head with your going home for christ shirt on they say i don't want to everything is a witness that's part of ruling well that's part of ruling well, uh, I was up here yesterday, my God, and uh, uh, taking care of some business, and, and there was a lady over here across this thing over there, and she was kind of going her way and stuff like that. Of course, I had first lady on, on FaceTime, and the first thing, first lady said, don't ruin your witness. Cover me. See what I'm trying to say? So the woman of God was out there. She had a little, she had all the broken pieces. Oh, by she kid about of a, of a bed in a basket, and she had a chair, and she said she, she, she was just sitting right there in the parking lot waiting for the sunset. Of course, we know she was out of her mind. And so, my God, it's all good. And so I began to just watch it and let the wife look at her. And my wife said, that's the people like this when you need to take time to pray. Yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? So I reached in my thing and gave her a little, some, some change and stuff like that and loved on her and told her, just make sure you clean up everything. She said, okay. But she had a whole little house sitting right there. Yeah. But the first thing my, my, my dime said, uh, uh, don't ruin your witness. Yeah. Yeah. 
See, that's part of ruling well. Let, let, let me help you. I'm moving. Let me, because, see, what I've learned, I come to understand, my God, one of the things that helped me was some of y'all might understand because, as I told y'all many years ago, that was Juju. This pastor was that person. I wasn't out of my mind, but I was living like she was living. Yeah, I, I was living like that. I was living like I didn't have nothing because uh, I didn't have nothing, my God, because I squandered it all off. You see what I'm trying to say? But you don't know who that woman is because uh, half of them people, my God, come from wealth. And they just lost their way. And when you, when they, God sent somebody up off in here, my God, and you take them and build them and mold them, somebody that woke up off in here and give you a million dollar check, my God, for taking. See, y'all don't understand how God works. I understand how he works, baby. You quit counting people out. Quit counting people out. Quit counting people out. Quit counting people out. You don't know what somebody going to become. You don't know what somebody going to be, my God. Quit counting people out. You just never know. You just never know. You just never know. And I don't do it because of that. I do it because God said love all people. Uh, I'm comfortable. Some of y'all could. Uh, I'm comfortable around there because I come from that. I don't mind. I love it. I move and shake. I had to teach Pastor Dean when we first moved over here. He all screwed. Pastor, be careful. I said, Dean, get out the way, man. I know what I'm doing, man. <laughs> Pastor, be careful. For them people, I said, man, please. These are my type of people. Then I did. I love it. I can't get nobody. Ain't nothing like that. All of them. Them is our type of people. All of them. Talking about be careful. I'm finna get right off of there and get with them. Yeah. yeah I'm speaking their language. I can't get nobody to say nothing right now. Uh, I know how to do it, baby. <laughs> But he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, be strong. Be strong. That need to help somebody because some of us just wrote people off. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't look like us and talk like us, we don't want to fool with them. If they can't benefit us, we don't want to have nothing to do with them. Yeah. Don't do that. My God. And so understand the real men of God, my God, is not sissies. It takes strength and a lot of strength and courage to be a godly man in this godless age that we live in, y'all. Look at the strength that God gave men in the Bible, like Moses. Going before the mighty Pharaoh, Moses, of Egypt, demanding that you let my people go. Look at Joshua and Caleb taking their stand of faith against those ten cowardly Israelite spies. Look at Gideon mm, going into battle against the Midianites with justice. Well, I mean, with just three, uh, 300 men armed with torches, clay pitchers, and trumpets. Look at John the Baptist, my God, boldly rebuking the king, my God, for his unlawful relationship with his brother Philip's wife. John the Baptist was beheaded because he spoke to the king and said, you in sin. You are sleeping with this man's wife. And from that, he was locked up and killed. When I trace back, my God, all the great men of God that God used in the Bible, they was warriors. If you read your Bible, my God, or, or you can see and you can follow the pattern that God raised up mighty warriors. And they all got a story like you and I got a story. They all didn't grow up in the palace. Some of them, my God, started in the bottom, but they made their way to the top. But they had to fight a lot of wars. They had to overcome a lot of things to do that what God has called them to do. My God, people are being, was being killed, sawed asunder, cut in half, bored. Burnt, I mean, hung upside down, Peter, them, and some of the disciples, my God, to do God's will. So I want every man to understand that the strength that David is talking about when it comes to his son Solomon has nothing to do with going to lift three or 400 pounds. It has everything to do, my God, with inner strength. And you get your inner strength, my God, from spending time with God. Please, fathers, don't think, my God, that it don't, you don't have to read your Bible to be strong. There is things, my God, that, we're, that, that will come upon your life and come in your life that if you won't have nothing inside you, you are, you are not ready to resist the temptation. You are not re ready to rage war against the enemy because you don't have nothing on the inside of you. My God, pour the strength that David is talking about to his son has everything to do, my God, with internal fortitude, internal strength, internal focus. You got to have laser focus, fathers, in this hour. My God, if you want to recover, my God, some of the things that the enemy has stole from you, you're going to have to line your life up according to God's power. Oh, my God, you got to ask God to increase and turn your desire toward reading his word. Why is it that men don't want to read? Uh, as they say, my God, keep them uneducated. Keep them dumb. Keep them uneducated. Keep them dumb. How can you and I know how to operate in God's kingdom and carry out his laws, statutes, decrees, and command when we don't read? How do you and I know how to function in God's kingdom when you don't read, them as the laws, them are the statutes, school to them are the commandments. If you don't read them, how can you fulfill them? Yeah. And the Bible says that David told Solomon, my God, if you obey these things, my God, God will show himself faithful. 
you will right. prosper right. in all that you do. Yeah. You would have favor. See, some of us don't believe that because we look at our natural life now and all we see is hell. All we see is chaos. All we see is failure. We can't even begin to accept, my God, what the Constitution says, my God. But I just want you to know, I once lived in hell. I once lived in chaos, my God. I had a whole lot of self-affliction, my God, pain that I caused. But since I've been reading that Constitution, my God, I have seen the manifestation of the promises, my God, and I've seen and I live and walk in the favor of God at a level I never dreamed of walking in. My God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I'm trying to help y'all, man, understand that the word of God works, man. All oh, the promise of God works, Troya. All you got to do is submit and surrender and you'll see God blow your mind. Oh, my God, somebody that's blessed, give God some glory, man. Oh. I share that because I'm trying to inspire you. As me and Champ was looking at T.D. Jakes, T.D. Jakes was making a statement to the church. He said, I am not fist to apologize because I'm blessed. He said, I'm not fist to apologize because I look good. I wear my clothes good. He was talking about that this morning. He said, I'm not fist to do that. I know where I come from, Jake said. I'm not going to let you dumb me down. That's not boasting. That's giving God the glory. Because guess what? Let me help you. Let me help you. When you look good, it makes the king look good. When you look good, ride good, smell good, dress good, my God, shop good, pray good, it makes the king look good. And I'm not going to apologize for it. You better ask somebody. I come from the gutter, baby. I know where I come from, baby. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Hey, boy, you better ask somebody. I'm like Jake's. I would not apologize for being blessed. I come from hell in the market of Mary Clay. You better ask somebody. If you are blessed, give God some glory. <laughs> Oh, my God, y'all hit a vein in me. Y'all better, I'm trying to teach you, but you hit a vein. Oh, you hit a vein. Oh, settle down, Jew, settle down, Jew. You hit a vein, baby. I'm not going to let your jealousy, my God, my God, make me shrink. And God just confirmed it with the great men of God. Now, I ain't saying obsessive. I told the class, I ain't saying you got to have four jets and all that. I ain't talking about all that. But some of y'all, my God, God been good to you. And you dumb it down because you're trying to please somebody. I told the class, quit worrying about people and worry about God. Some people want you to dumb down. Some people want you to be in poverty. Some people want you to be broke because it make them feel better. My God, but the devil is alive. Rule well. Men, stand up and rule well. Ah, take your wife and place as a man. Hey, my God, and walk like a king. I'm a king, baby. You better ask somebody. Mm. Yeah, you got to rule well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to learn how to rule. When you look at the lives of these men, my God, it was one powerful truth. Godly men are strong men. They are strong husbands. They are strong fathers. Oh, my God, somewhere or sometime along the way, my God, we, we get out of balance, and I'm guilty of it. My God, you get out of balance, my God, but they don't make you less than. My God, when you make a mistake, you come back and make it right and get back in the race, man. Pick yourself up, my God, dirty dies, and keep on walking, baby. My God, because we got to rule well. Who come on, somebody. So David was telling Solomon, my God, be strong. But be strong, my God, in obeying God's commandments. Be strong in following God's decrees and laws and statutes, my God. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand, fathers. My God, part of being strong ain't got nothing to do with what kind of car you drive. Oh, my God, what kind of clothes you even wear, my God. And how many weights you lift, my God. Being strong has everything to do with how you submit to the king's authority. That's what being strong got to do with. Hey, some, come on, female, stand up in the church and give God a hand. Amen. Yes, Lord. I ain't gonna labor. Oh my God. So he says, be strong, be strong, be strong, be strong. Oh my God. I promise you, thank you, Holy Ghost Christian, because you're getting ready to get married. And, uh, and uh, 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 if you want to want to stay attractive to you, be strong. Internal. <laughs> point number two. Why would David, watch this, point number two, put it on the screen. He challenged him to prove himself. He says, be strong, now prove yourself. He's saying something to his son. Because see, you're going to take on a heavy mantle. It's a great responsibility to lead millions of people. And you need to have internal strength. And you got to prove yourself a man. 
Now see, now, now, now see, 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 David, see, 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 what I drive don't make me no man. Real talk. What type of house I stay in don't make me no man. I promise you. He, 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 God, see, let me tell you something. In order for people to, oh my God, in order, men, 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 fathers, in order for somebody to follow you. See, many of us want our wives to submit, but we ain't giving them nothing to submit to. We want our wives to submit, but we ain't giving them nothing to submit. They're they not going to submit to inconsistency. They're not going to follow this, sir. Uh, They're they, they not, not a real one. They know who they are. Uh, not someone that self-esteem has been. Oh, my God. See, see this thing, she ain't. Uh, you, she just can't, you just won't follow anything. Uh, but he said, he said, prove yourself a man. One of the things I teach the men on Monday, and that's why you need to come to Monday's night, men discipleship tomorrow night, my God. Because, see, my God, people won't follow you if they don't trust you. See, many of us, my God, we frustrated. I'm talking to the fathers and the husbands. Many of us is frustrated at the crib because she won't submit. Well, what are you giving her to submit to? See, submission go both ways. And I'm sorry, my God, that they over here at going off of Christ learning their value, learning their name, their image and stuff is changing. Their confidence is going up as ladies. Oh, that their sexual morale is going up as ladies. Oh, my God, how they look at themselves is going up as ladies. And so, therefore, it's things that they used to tolerate before they got hurt that they're not tolerating now. Uh I'm going to pick y'all back up, me. I'm looking at y'all. I got you. I promise you they will not outdo us today. Uh, hey, my God. But, uh, but I'm saying that, my God, because you need to understand. See, that was a teaching moment. Uh, so some of you men that spotty, and my God, hitting and missing. Why do you, why do you, you at home while she at discipleship, uh, you, you at home while she in class, see, they getting talk stuff, my God. And you coming home looking at this woman and say, Ugh, what's wrong with you? And, and, and she don't allow you to do the way you used to do it. She don't, she saying something about you uh, uh, still on this job, on this couch, talking about you ain't got no job. And, and she, she not, now the stuff that she used to accept, she don't accept no more. And you're wondering why. Because she's coming into who she is. She learning that she got the rule right. She not accepting that mess no more. So you got to come up, fathers. You got to come up, man. And and you got to walk. You got to walk, baby. You got to walk, baby. My God. And then they'll get in line. When you walk right, they'll follow right. I can't get nobody to say that right there, baby. Hey, hey. You got to walk. You got to live something. No, she ain't going to submit. She ain't tolerating that mess no more. So what you got on some polo and some J's? Live something. Prove yourself a man. Let's go a little deeper. David was not fully confident, though, church. That's, see, see, David said, son, prove yourself a man. Because, see, David, understand, my God, when people submit to you, it's, it's by their choice. As I taught y'all, pastors, people don't have to submit to you. People don't have to follow you. When somebody come and submit their life, submit their family unto you, submit their ministry unto you, that's an honor. And as the king of going over Christ church, my God, come on, in the natural, my God, it's my job and our job to make sure that we, we handle, my God, properly and rule well your gifts, your life, your family. Come on, somebody. We got to manage your resources. We got to manage your finances, right? I have an obligation, my God, to make sure that I rule well when you come and submit to my leadership. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Kingdom. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't get to because I can. Yeah. See, you got to understand that. Oh, my God, it's so important to stay in alignment. The reason why some of us are getting sprinkled and not being submerged is because we out of line. Even though we in church, we out of alignment with the king's statutes and requirements. And that's why it's tough. That's why it's tough. Mm -hmm. David wasn't fully convinced, though. Oh, my God. David wasn't fully convinced that Solomon was the right man for the job. Remember, remember, this is in the book, baby. Solomon had lived in the palace. He had never set foot on a battlefield. Solomon didn't. He had been surrounded by women his whole life. He was a softy, per se. Mm -hmm. David had really wanted, my God, David had really wanted his son, Adonjai, to be his successor. Adonjai, my God, had proven himself. Watch this in the natural. Watch this. I'm going somewhere. Adonjai, which is David's other son, by another woman. That wasn't Bathsheba's son. That was his other son by another woman. We call that movie A Strange Woman. Uh, uh, this was a, another woman. Another son by another woman. And Adonjah had proven himself to be a man, naturally, external. 
on the battlefield. But the prophet Nathan had persuaded David to choose Solomon as his successor because Adonjai could not be trusted. Even though he was a warrior, even though he was side by side with his father on the battlefield, there was something going on in the inside that, that, that the natural eye couldn't see. Oh, but that laser-focused king that sits high and look low can see right. See, you can present anything to me and her, but God sees. <laughs> Oh, my God. So even though David, my God, the king, my God, who was ruling well, the kingdom, my God, wanted his other son by the other woman, my God, to be king, my God. But David, my God, who was the king, who was ruling well, my God, couldn't see like God could see. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, my God, God had to send a prophet to David because David was getting ready to make another mistake. And so when God confirmed it through the man of God, the prophet Nathan, that's why it's good to be properly connected. Because God would send a prophet, not in title, because I'm, I'm going to tell you something. If, uh, God can send a prophet, my God, not in title, mm -hmm. my God, to answer a prayer that you've been praying in, pri in private. Yeah. Yeah. But if you are not in the body and you are not here consistently, my God, you've been praying and asking God to confirm. You've been praying and asking God to reveal. And God said, you, if you'd have been at church today, my God, I had your answer. Your prayers has come up as a memorial, and I'm ready to answer your prayer. But because you was out of position, because you made an excuse to stay home, uh, you got bitter about something, you chose to stay home. But I had your answer sitting in the house of the Lord. It's, all, it's The answer is in the house of the Lord, my God. I don't know why you think you got to go everywhere, my God, but the answer is in the house of the Lord. So God God sent David an answer through the man of God. Thank God that David was submitted enough, Tiffany, to receive from, prophet, yeah. from the prophet Nathan. Yeah. Oh, my God. He was willing to accept, my God, what the prophet said. Oh, my God. It ain't your will. I don't care if you want to die, I want Solomon, God said, and David submitted to it. Is you fighting against God? Are your, is, you, is, your, is your will so strong when you refuse to submit to what God is saying? Yeah. Yeah. David, watch this. David was the king. Boy, I'm full. <laughs> David was the king, Talia, and he, he ruled well. He was in good standing. He was in right position. Oh, my God, he had run his, he had run his course. He was at the end of his life. He was getting ready to make another terrible mistake at the end. But God sent the answer to the prophet. And David was humble enough. He wasn't prideful. He wasn't arrogant. He submitted and made his son. The successor, because even though God told him way back then that your, that your, that your son through Bathsheba will be the next king. My God. But David couldn't see it in the natural because Solomon was cute. <laughs> Solomon was light-skinned. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't tough. He wasn't rugged. But because he wasn't, oh, I can't. Oh, come on, somebody. What am I trying to say? Oh, my God. What? See, be careful. Be car oh, my God. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful that you don't have your heart set like a flint. But when the Spirit of God comes to correct and, re and divert or detour you, you can't let go. I said, be careful that you don't have your heart set, mind set like a flint. And when the Spirit of God comes to sin correction, you can't deviate or you won't let go because you are so insistent on your will being done. Yeah. See, I had to learn that the tough way. Yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? So therefore, prove yourself a man. Part of proving yourself a man, my God, is how well you rule. Yeah. How well you rule. Watch this. Watch this. Mm -hmm. So Adonja had proven himself to be a man because he, 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 he was a man of war. Mm. Adonja couldn't be trusted. He, he had a rebellious streak in him. Mm. Mm. That's a teaching principle. If the pattern shows rebellion as a pastor, I cannot turn my back on what I see and act like it don't exist because you've been with me for quite some time. Or because you know me. And so I turn my back on inconsistency. I turn my back on when you want me to be your pastor. When, you, when her voice matters. I can't turn my back on conditional submission. David made that mistake as a father. And when his sons was in sin, he never corrected them. And it cost him a whole lot of turmoil in his family. See what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And so as a set man of God, pastor, see what I'm trying to say? No longer 
if you've been inconsistent and you've been showing me that I'm a conditional pastor to you, when my voice only matters when you want it to matter, I, I'm just I, I, I'm giving you principles from the book because it come a time now at 50 because I'm always say I'm there at 50 where I got to protect my sanity where I got to protect my happiness. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore you, I'm trying to teach you how to be careful when you allow people to handle you conditionally. They can't handle you conditionally on their terms when they want to, how they want to. I'm only pastor when they want me to be pastor. You only my friend when I need you. Yeah. I, only, I only want your voice, you know what I'm saying, when I need your voice. Other than that, though, you really have no rule in my life. You really have no say-so in my life. See, that right there is terrible in the church everywhere. Adonjai, Adonjai had a rebellious streak in him. What am I trying to say? He disqualified himself from the throne. That what you leave unattended and you justify is disqualifying you from the promises being fulfilled in your life. That's why the Bible says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. The stuff that you think is okay, it's not okay. Juju and you, it's not okay. Men, the things that you think is okay, it's not okay. Ah, uh, that don't matter. It do matter. David was looking at his son, Adonjai, because he'd been on the war field, battlefield with him. But God said, yeah, but I can't use that. Because he looked good external, but he's terrible internal. So what am I saying? So God, watch this, and I'm moving, shift it. Now let's go a little deeper. I'm about to. Let's go a little deeper. He had, he had, he had rebellion, my God, in his heart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, my God. He, it says Absalom, also to Absalom, his other son, David's other son. Adonjai and Absalom, also tr who tried to take the throne from David. David had one son, Adonjai, who was rebellious, and then he had another son, Absalom, to try to steal the throne. You know what? David is reaping the consequences, y'all, of a lot of wrong decisions early on in his life. And as I've taught y'all, those decisions, Brother Barry has caught up with him now. Those decisions that you make early on, you might not see it, Early on, but towards the end, you wonder why what's happening. You wonder why this is going this way. You wonder why that was running so smooth and now it ain't. Because he made a series of wrong decisions. Yeah, right. David, the king who ruled well, my God. But now, my God, his decisions, y'all stay with me. I'm trying to help y'all. Has caught up with him, Brian. Are you listening to me, son? Are y'all listening to me? His decisions that he made on the front end is now caught up with him. Yeah. Now he got a son that's rebellious, and then he got another son that tried to kill him. Absalom. He wanted to steal the throne and he tried to kill him. David was on the run from his own flesh and blood. He was hiding. David left his throne. He left his palace, Alvin, and went on the run and started hiding in caves and so forth from his own flesh and blood. My God. That's like Josiah's after you and you running. That's like, my God, my God, Juju's after me and I'm running. Oh, my God. That's how that's like, well, baby, because it's like uh, 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 Savion is after you, man of God, and you running. David was running from his own son, but he was running because of his own consequences. Find his own choices, his own consequences behind his own choices. What am I trying to get you to understand? Part of proving yourself a man has everything to do with the choices that you make. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us is angry as fathers, and we cannot accept the full mantle as a father because we're angry, but we're not angry at the person in the mirror. Oh my God. We're not angry at the person in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. We, not you, are not angry. So David could not choose Adonjai. He chose Solomon because that's who God wanted. All right? Are y'all with me so far? Is this helping anybody so far? Oh, it ain't. It ain't. That's okay. If it's just five of them, it's just five. My God. But, but David, I'm trying to get you to understand. David is also, even though he commissioned his son, David is still dealing with some consequences behind his own choices. Can you imagine being on the run? From your own son? Can you imagine, Tanya? Baby, can you imagine Naila trying to kill you? This is Bible, man. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I want y'all to think, man. Yeah, yeah. We got to think. We got to think, man. God, our choices and decisions are killing us. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff in our future, my God, is being robbed because we're making choices, wrong choices in our present. Yeah. 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 I know it's not a good 
hype message, but it's good teaching message. My God. Let me get through. Let me get through. Let me get through. Mm -hmm. When you read farther down in the second chapter of uh, 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 First King, David tells Solomon one of the first duties as a new king would be to kill Joab and Shimei. Put them to death. <laughs> Prove yourself a man. David said, proving yourself a man is to kill those enemies to me. Joab and Shimei tried to destroy David when he was king. And so David gave him a pass. Watch this. David gave him a pass when he was king. Now he has transferred this kingdom. Now he told his son, part of you proving yourself a man to me and the people is to kill these two right here that try to kill your father. That's Bible, any woman of God. And if you're reading, you understand. So you got to be in your book to follow me because I studies. See, I'm trying, some of y'all, y'all way over here because y'all don't know nothing. You, you ain't in your book. That's why you're lost. Now I can see it. I can feel it. It's okay. Read your Bible. Read your Bible and you'll get more benefit out of coming to church because you'll know what I'm talking about. That's just another instruction. But he told him your first order of business has to do with you killing. I thought God was a merciful God. Yes, he is. But the Bible also says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. He said, one of the, one of the ways you prove yourself, you kill these people that try to kill me. Mm. Both of these men had once been David's closest friends, y'all. These were David's closest friends, and they turned their back on him. Just like the church. Come on, somebody. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But they betrayed David by joining with David's son, Absalom. When he tried to kill David as king, David wants Solomon to prove to him and prove to himself that he's got what it takes to be a king. We are living in a time when traditional definition of manhood is being attacked and challenged on all sides. Listen to this, y'all. This is on my study, my research. Our colleges and universities now teach that there are five sexes, not two. They are teaching there are heterosexual men, heterosexual women, homosexual men, homosexual women, and transgenders. Genders. Five types of people. Sexes. Never before, I'm moving, never before in the history of America, of, of the American male, have we suffer, suffered such an identity crisis. Our men are in such, it's hard being a man in America. It's hard because everywhere you look, Everywhere you look on TV, they are dumbing down the man. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then it don't make it no better because these women that get good jobs, that's way educated in the man, the first thing they tell you, I don't need you. I can take care of my own self. We say, I can do bad by my own self. Why do I need you? Because you can't help me. You see what I'm trying to say? But when you bring it back to the Constitution, See what I'm trying to say? It's not good that man shall be alone. Now let me bring it up to our time. There is some substance to a person that's able to take care of themselves. If you're not bringing nothing to the table, see what I'm trying to say? It's going to make it hard in the house. But if, watch this, stay with me because I'm, I'm real, I'm, I'm out here with y'all. But see, if you learn how to remember to marry couples, what this symbolizes, this what I heard symbolizes covenant. Covenant is not broken. Covenant is not sexually violated. Covenant, my God, teaches you how to rule your home well, men. See what I say? So some of us clap, my God, about what I said, but then you got to ask yourself, what are you doing? See, it all goes back to the priest, prophet, and king of the home. See what I say? You want her to conform. You want her to submit. My God, you want her to quit talking about you ain't doing nothing. My God, ask yourself, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch. We talking about proving yourself a man. Because mine's sitting right here. And so, therefore, if you're in between jobs, the dishes need to be washed. The yard need to be cut. Cars need to be cleaned. Babies need to be picked up. Don't get me started, my God. There's many ways to prove yourself a man. It ain't all on her. What you don't be there for if you're not going to help her be what she need to be. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? So we disqualify ourselves because my wife will tell you, I like lines in the carpet. So I vacuum. I ain't got no problem with washing no dishes. So I wash dishes. There's many ways. But see, we come out of that old regime and we tell ourselves as men, that's the woman's responsibility. The devil is a lie. That's our responsibility to make sure that the house is together. 
And when you rule like that, then she gonna submit. When you rule like that, she will follow you. Even though she mad at you, she still gonna submit. Even though she mad, she still gonna love you and give you some love. And I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. I'm still with proving yourself a man. To keep coming on talking about you ain't got no job, that's not proving yourself a man. To keep making excuses about why you can't do what you need to do, that's not proving yourself a man. Find a way to earn her respect. Find a way to rule right. Find a way to be productive. Find a way to be popular. Get it done. My God, show her that you're trying to do it. If you want to respect your kids, humble yourself and go back to your kids and repent and ask them to forgive you. Part of proving yourself as a man, you got to go back and repent to your children how you raised them and what you didn't do for them when you should have been doing it. I'm guilty of it too. I had to go back and make it right. Prove yourself a man. Let me get out of here. Point number three, I'm going to leave that alone. Let me get y'all home. Let me get y'all home. So a part of proving yourself a man is being able to come home with yourself and apology. Oh, my God, I had it. Oh, oh. Y'all don't understand, my God, I promise you, I live what I preach. I'm telling you. Y'all don't understand. Oh, my God, the price that got to be paid. My God, the pastor at this level. Oh, my God, the pressure of full-time ministry, the pressure on my marriage, the pressure on my children, the warfare that I'm in, my God. I'm living what I'm telling y'all. I still got to prove myself a man. I still got to prove myself a father. Even though I've been married over 30 some years, I still got to prove that I can handle this calling that's on my life. And they call it your sister being married. I'm telling y'all, the price. Proving yourself a man don't stop because you say I do. We got the wrong mindset. But let me pick you up and I'm going to get you out here. Uh, uh, we dealing with identity crisis. Men, that's why the church is set up at this church. To help you understand who you are. You need to know your name, men. You need to find out what your purpose in life is, men, so you can begin to do that. My God, I didn't know who I was. That's why I did the things that I did. See what I'm trying to say? Because I didn't know. But once I came to the saving knowledge that I told the class, once I began to understand what the Constitution say, once I understood what God expected of me as a man, then I don't have no more excuses. Write this down, men. Quit making excuses. Quit making excuses. And, and you know what, Pastor? And don't let nobody crucify you and, and, and put you down. Because you ain't making no excuses. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I ain't always been here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Staying on track consists of one step at a time. Yeah. After you quit making excuses, then you got to advance. Yeah. Proving yourself a man has everything with ruling every area of your life. Yeah. Naturally and spiritually. Yeah. My God. Women, wives, children, please understand the tall order that a man has. Especially an African American man in America. But I would not allow none of my sons that's up under me that's really connected to this church to make excuses. I always talking about the white man. I don't want to hear another. You can't bring that to me. Can't bring none of that to me. That ain't nothing but an excuse for you not to prove yourself a man. It's all. Because if you think about the people that God has used in my life, all of them was white. And God loved me. Can I say this? And I'm done. Can I, can I, uh, 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 if it weren't for some of those same white men that you prejudiced against, you had to church your heart too. See, that's part of the inside. That's defiled. See what I'm trying to say? Because the white man ain't the problem. We understand what they've done back in the past, but that's not the problem of the present. Yes, there's racism and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, you and I, I and you have just as much opportunity to succeed in America than anybody. But I think about an Eddie Miller. I think about a Bishop McIntosh. I think about a Je- Pastor Jeff Vogt. Them, them, them is white people. Governor Frank Keaton. My God, Lawanya, them is white people. My God, that blessed my life, which gave me an opportunity to do business that at the level that I do business. My God. And so some of y'all disqualifying yourself because you're racist. My God. And therefore, you don't want to get connected to nobody. And you're disqualifying yourself because you say you're a Christian, but you're a racist. Yeah. 
If I'd have took on that mindset when I was in prison, talking about the white man this and the white man that, my God, I'd have came up out of here and I'd have shown Eddie Miller. I wouldn't have went over there with Pastor Jeff. The governor wouldn't have gave me no pardon. I would have disqualified myself, Sparkle. I would have missed out on great opportunities to advance God's kingdom. But because I ain't got that racism in my soul, my God, I love them all, my God. And whoever God want to use to bless me, you can bless me. I don't care what color you are. You want to, my God, my God, you better have somebody, baby. Hey, hey, I know you don't like it. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, you don't pay my bills, so I don't care. I'm preaching the gospel. So therefore, I'm a man. So therefore, I'm a man. I'm a man. So I tell myself I'm a man if I only fool with black people. I'm a man if I only fool with wealthy people. I'm a man if I only hang out with gangsters. I'm a man if I only hang out with, with businessmen and people. See, when you're disqualifying yourself. David told Solomon, don't think like that. Rule well spiritually. Set your governments up in the kingdom. Make sure, you're, make sure you rule with integrity. That's part of proving yourself a man. My God, not proving, proving yourself a man to the people. Because David understood that in order for these people to submit to you at the level that they submit to me, you're going to have to earn their trust. You're going to have to earn their trust. That's why David said, prove yourself a man. Rule well. Be strong internal. The same requirements and the same laws, the same expectations that you put on the people, put them on yourself. Ooh, and this last point, let me give it to you, it's, it's short. And then he challenged him to walk with the Lord. Point three, learn to walk with the Lord. Be strong, prove yourself a man, and then walk. Be strong internal, prove yourself. What you expect for them to do, you do it. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And you do it by doing number three, walking. Yeah. If you won't th- shut the line up, then lead by example. Can I help some of y'all? And I'm being sensitive. Some of y'all are dealing with a lot of pain behind the ex-wife and the baby mamas. They taking all of your money and you can't see your babies. And you're praying, per se, that God fix the situation. So you got to ask yourself, how much anger, how much disobedience to the laws, statutes, requirements, and commands of God am I submitted to? What is blocking God from turning my baby's mama heart so I can see my kids? What, is, what stone need to be rolled away so that I can have an opportunity, my God, not only to pay for my children, child support, but also be in my children's life? See, where I'm going with this, man, my God, proving yourself a man, see, you got to look in the mirror and say, what are you not doing? Vertical. Yeah. Not horizontal. Right. See, because right. some of you got it right horizontal, but you got it wrong vertical. And you got to understand the Bible says why you got to read your Bible. That's how I'm going to lose you every time when you come to this church. My God, the Bible says your heart is in the hand of the king and he turns it whichever way he will. Anytime God want to turn somebody for you, he will. Anytime God want to turn somebody against you, he will. See what I'm trying to say? And so many of you are angry because you're not getting an opportunity to see and father your kids, but you're angry because they're taking your money. So ask yourself, my God, when you get an opportunity to talk with your homeboy, what type of words are coming out of your mouth about your baby's mama? Are you spitting venom? Because the Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, there's life and death in the power of your tongue. So just like you saying, God, I want to see my kids, but you turn around in the next breath and curse the very person that has the power to help you with your kids. Prove yourself a man. You want her to release the opportunity for you to see your kids, but you talk about her like a dog. And you know what? Can I help you? Can I help you? She may be acting just like what you're talking about. So you got to say, okay, God, what are you trying to teach me? Because guess who God uses the most to get to her? That which is closest to her. What is God trying to develop in your life? So guess who he using? That baby mama, that ex-wife. And so God's saying, you know what? I'm going to teach you what long suffering is like. 
Because it takes faith and patience to do the will of the Father. So I'm finna mix, my God, I'm finna strengthen your faith, but I'm gonna do it by being, by making you patiently wait for me to turn, my God, this situation towards you. See, God is trying to train you. I'm still with the number three, how to walk with him. That's why you got to guard against bitterness. That's why you got to guard against distractions. See what I'm trying to say? Because many of us right now, it was so much pain doing worship. And I understand some of it is joy. Some of it is just emotional pain. Some of us never knew our fathers and so forth. My God. But you got to ask yourself, are you shooting yourself in the foot by what's coming out your mouth, fathers? You are angry because you don't get to see them. But how are you talking about them when they ain't around? See? We hurting ourselves. I didn't say y'all we. I, I'm being insistent because I ain't never had to deal with that. I, I'm with mine. You see what I'm trying to say? And I raised mine, so I'm not going to be insistent. But I'm trying to help you. Yeah. If you want God to change the situation, you got to position yourself, my God, in God's kingdom for him to change it. And you can't say bless the Lord and curse her at the same time. He not going out of that. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, my God. Mm. Oh, my God, somebody please give Jesus a hand, man. <laughs> Let me give you this. Verses 3 and 4 says, I'm done. Observe. Paul, I mean, David is telling son, his son, observe the requirements of the Lord, your God, and follow all of his ways. Keep his decrees. Keep his commands and regulation and laws. Those words right there, remember this, pastors, those words. Decrees, commands, and regulations and laws that comes from the Torah. The first five books of the Bible is the Torah. Them is Moses. Them is Hebrew names that they use. Hebrew words that they use, my God, my God, for the laws, my God, in the Constitution, in the Old Testament. See what I'm trying to say? So God, David is telling his son, my God, to obey the decrees, the commands, regulations, and laws written in the law of Moses so that you will be successful in all you do and wherever you go. If you do this, my God, I'm coming in, y'all, then the Lord will keep the promise he made. He told me if your descendants live as they should and follow me faithfully with all their heart and soul, one of them will always be on the throne. Write this down up on the point number three, please. Number one, keeping God's statutes mean obeying his unchanging laws. God's laws don't change for you and I. Also, number two, commandments. Commandments, that's God's instructions for daily living. God's written constitution to govern his people. See, a lot of us see the Bible as rules to keep us from enjoying life, but they, really the Bible protects you from killing yourself. <laughs> God ain't trying to restrict you and I. He's trying to protect you from killing yourself. Because the Bible says a man left to himself is doomed for destruction. You think about the things you was doing before God saved you. You think about your mindset, my God. You think about even the things, thank you, Holy Ghost. You think about even the things you would do even since you've been a Christian. Things, my God, that you know you shouldn't be doing, but you're doing. And justify doing them. That's what I'm saying. The, the word of God is a protector. It don't restrict you. I'm telling you, I'm living my best life ever. And I ain't high. And I ain't selling no dope. All the stuff that I thought to bring happiness don't bring no happiness. That stuff don't bring happiness. The stuff that we think, my God, partying and kicking and all that, we have to go to the club, we have to do all that stuff. It ain't, I promise you, y'all, it is not any man up here. I'm telling you right now, it is not boring being a kingdom man. It's not. It's not. You may think it's boring. I promise you, I kicks it. And I kicks it real tough. It's not boring. Somebody need to hear that. I'm serious, y'all. I'm coming to a club, but somebody, we, even you ladies, need to understand. It is not boring being a Christian. There's a whole lot of fun. There's a whole lot of excitement, my God, that you can have when you get around the light, my God. Why is it that it's so easy for you as a Christian to hang around darkness? Some of our friends, you look at our phone, more of our friends is of the world than it is of Christ. Of Christ. You, and you, what you know we tell ourselves? It's easy to talk to people that's not in church. People in church is too messy. You see how we justify? You see how we justify? You mean tell me in a church of this size, all these people, you can't find one person that's going hard for Christ? The devil is a lie. That all of your friends in your roller decks is unsaved people. My God, but that's who you want to for spiritual advice, spiritual guidance. Don't you see something wrong with that? Oh, this is heavy teaching. I'm sorry. Let me give you this and get you out of it. Number two, ju three, judgments. God's laws determine justice on legal matters. 
God's laws determine justice. David was telling King Solomon, set your, my God, set your throne up, my God. Make sure you rule well. Make sure you carry out justice. Get all that prejudice up out of your heart. Yeah. That is speaking to somebody in her, man and woman. Amen. And my last thing, testimonies, my God. Oh, my God, these are the things that bore, bore witness to God's cur and his favor in your life. They overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Don't be afraid to testify because God has blessed you. Don't be afraid, my God, to let people know. And, and I always point it back vertical. I always point it up vertical. I always take your boasting vertical. Everything y'all heard me say, those that have been sitting up on me, always goes back to God. Everything goes to God. I'm talking about, and the reason why God serves it when he needs to serve is to inspire you. That if he can do it for him, he can do it for me. Because God is not prejudice. Yes. God don't show favoritism. Right. But are you willing to stay on track? Yeah. Are you willing to be strong internally? Mm-hmm. Are you willing to prove yourself a man by ruling well? And are you willing to walk with God with a lifestyle? That's all God is saying today. Prove yourself strong internally. Prove yourself a man. My God, by ruling well, that what he has given you, priest, prophet, and king, rule. Your spirit of influence, my God, as a man, and my God, you have a home that is your kingdom. You are to rule it. If it's out of order, it's your fault. Mm-hmm. If she's unhappy at times, it's my fault. Yeah. If the kids is chaotic, it's your fault, man. If it's a step, if you got step kids, God forbid, my God, she won't let me pass, I mean, my, I'll lead them, then you need to sit down and communicate and say, look, I can't rule right, my God. I know some of y'all got step kids in the family, but you need to sit down and get it, and all your getting get understanding. Oh, my God, I'm in there. I know I am, so sit down and have a talk with her. When you go out to East, I won't talk about nothing, but let's get an understanding on how we're going to raise these kids because we out of order when it comes to raising these kids. Oh, my God, that's what you go home and talk about. If you're going to eat, let's talk about getting on one accord. My God, I'm raising these kids because you won't let me say nothing to them. You expect me to be the priest, prophet, the king. I can't spank them. I can't discipline them. I can't say nothing to them. I'm miserable in this home. Communicate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see the faces of the people. My God, you know why God said that? Because some of y'all are dealing with that men. But you got to sit down and talk to her. What I did, Pastor, she crazy. Oh. As we say, and I'm through, it's hard on the yard. It's hard on the yard, baby. Men of God fight to rule well. I understand how hard it is. As I told you, I'm standing up here by myself, but there's a whole lot of people, Brother Cherry, that's standing up here with me, man. There's a whole lot of submission, a whole lot of correction, then and even now, to get to where I'm at in life. And I have not arrived. I still got a long way to go in life. But I understand what David was trying to convey to his son, Solomon. He says, be strong. Don't go lift weights. Being strong means that you have an intimate relationship with God. Because David understood that it's going to take your relationship with God to help you rule well. And then he said, my God, prove yourself. That means, my God, model, model before the nation what you want them to do. Don't ask them. Don't put no demands on the people of God that you're not willing to put on yourself. That's what he means by prove yourself a man. Y'all miss me. Don't miss that. Don't put no demands on people that you won't put on yourself. And when you put the demands on the people and you, that you put on yourself, then they will begin to follow you. And then he tells you, my God, how you earn full, 100 complete confidence in people is that they see your life modeled out what you're asking them to do. Every man that's a father, please come stand quickly down here. Thank you for allowing the spirit of the living God to go over. But it's needed. I want to make this declaration to all of y'all as y'all come. It's not easy being who we are. We're up against a lot of challenges, y'all. Y'all come on in, line up. Every man is a father. Come on in. It's not easy being who we are. I'm not even talking about no color either. I'm talking about being a male man in America. It's not easy. We up against a whole lot of stuff. 
There's a whole lot of stuff that's vying for our attention. There's a whole lot of people vying for our attention. There's a whole lot of things fighting for your attention. My God, my God, there's a whole lot of things pulling on our hearts, pulling on our loyalty to God, pulling on our focus. That's why I preach the sermon, go and look at it, death by distraction. Many of us, as we stand here, are completely distracted in many areas of our lives right now. We are focused on one thing and one thing only. That is just being a provider at, at the best way we can. That means we are out of balance. That means we are dealing with more frustration than we are dealing with peace. Because we are pursuing one thing, trying to make sure we got enough money to pay our debt. That is not ruling well men of God I am fixed to empower every last one of you it's a reason why Juju your pastor for those that's members of this church share the things that he share you have a living example standing in front of you that if you submit my God to God's laws decrees and statutes God will blow your mind I never had in my wildest ideas that I would ever minister I'll ever be doing half of the stuff that God got me doing today you have watched me come from just juju all the way to where I'm at today I had no idea that I would ever do the things that God got me doing but I ain't never made no excuses about my former life and I don't make none about my personal life with Christ right now in order to get what you need from God you got to line your life up you got to do it God's way Scooter it can't be your way that's why many of us is frustrated because we try to serve God according to our way and that's why we defeated in every area of our life so what you got some money do your kids respect you what that mean I got money but I ain't got no respect many of us are standing here right now is struggling silently with addiction right now all type of addictions that God said you are free from when he bowed his head and breathed his last he said it is finished that what is ruling you as of today you should be ruling it. Allow the reverse. Allow the shift to take place in your life. I want you to know this, y'all. None of us is better than the next man to your left and to the right. I need every last one of you to do what I'm called to do. And you need every last one of them to do what you are called to do in life. I promise you there is somebody standing to your right or to your left that has a key to unlock the very thing you've been praying and asking God for. Yes, God. The deliverance that you need is standing right here in front of you. Oh, That's right. Let it out. Let it out. The deliverance, son. The pain. The struggle. The frustration that you're dealing with even as I stand here with you now. I smell it. God wants you free, son. Yes, Lord Jesus. God wants you free. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God has put somebody in your life and you're looking at them eyeball to eyeball. In the name of Jesus. That can help you and want to help you. And has modeled everything you're trying to 